my goodness! It was a tiny little camera. I had no clue how long it had been there or when it got there. I was all shaky, picked it up, and then freaked out, tossing the <laughs> camera as far as I could. Was some pervert watching me? All the worst case scenarios flashed through my mind, and I screamed like a lunatic. I live alone with no family or friends nearby. What should I do? I'm Linda. Stick around with me and subscribe to the channel to join me in finding some answers, okay? The Watchers. Ever heard of them? Imagine one day you discover one, or even several, tracking devices in your room. And you realize that every day someone is watching and recording you. That's seriously creepy. I never thought I'd find myself in that situation until today. I got back from school after a tiring day of studying. Instead of getting home at past 5 like usual, I didn't make it until after 8 because I ran into some problems on the way home. Hey, did you know? There was simply a breaking case in this neighborhood. Really? There is no way, since no one reported or say anything. It is true. He crept it immediately after the homeowner left, turned the entire house upside down, and fled. When she returned, she was terrified and quickly dialed 911. That was sucking news. How could anyone actually do something like that to a woman? When he was caught, everyone was stunned to find out he was the son of a wealthy businessman. And that explains it all. He exploited his family's power to silence the media and keep <laughs> everyone in the dark. As the neighbor of that poor woman, I know every detail about this. You're not joking, are you? Why would he do something so out of character if he was that wealthy and powerful? Not only that, but he's a <gasps> pervert who enjoys to follow and take along <laughs> young and beautiful girls. This is actually the first time he broke into a house like this. It's still disgusting anyway. You should be more careful with every stranger around you. You hear me? But to be honest, it is really nice to have someone chasing after us, don't you think? At least I can know what being followed by someone was like. <laughs> Everything seemed normal when I left. The front door was still locked up tight. Stuff inside the house was untouched. Shoes and wardrobe, all the same. But I had this weird feeling that made me super uncomfortable. Since it was the weekend, I decided to tidy up the room after getting home. Something tells me to get close to the painting hanging on the wall, always lurking behind the desktop computer. A small scratch on the painting piqued my curiosity. I took the painting down, tore the canvas with my fingers, and out fell a tiny camera much to my surprise. Everything's gotta start from back when I was still in high school. My dad's a lawyer and my mom's an auditor. They're known to be pretty uptight and serious, and you bet they raised me strictly. No dyeing hair, no piercings, no staying out late, and a million other no-nos. But I never really pushed back against them until they forced me to apply for a school I had zero interest in. I'm not a kid anymore. Mom and Dad, you can't just decide my life like this. Your life is what we give you, and us making decisions for you ain't wrong. What's wrong with being a lawyer? Or else you can study economics and financial management. Why keep hitting these dancing? There's no future in that. Listen to me. But I don't want to. You- Enough trying to convince her. If she's so good at it, let her make it on her own. The argument between me and my parents ended with me, their only daughter, packing up and leaving the house an hour later. I couldn't bear being oppressed by them for another second. I felt like a bird finally set free after being caged for so long, bursting with energy and diving into a life full of freedom. <laughs> I rented an apartment using the savings I had piled up along with some pocket money from my grandparents. I started enjoying my life without overthinking too much. After leaving home, luck also came my way unexpectedly. I ran into Johnson, my first unrequited <laughs> love at 16. Right at... I heard they invited a famous speaker today. Wonder who it is? So curious. Who cares? Because all eyes will be on the student council president today. The student council president? Don't tell me you don't know who he is, Linda. He's handsome. Like seriously? Handsome. Is he really that much of a catch? Just wait, you'll see. Johnson, he's like a perfect work of art. Welcome to LDA High School. I'm Johnson Martin, the student council president. It's an honor to meet all of you. That was the first time I saw Johnson, a guy who had every girl swooning, including me. I was struck by love at first sight from the moment I looked up the stage, listening to his warm voice. 
My silent affection lasted for over a year and ended in silence because I didn't have the courage to confess my feelings. But it seems like fate gave me a second chance. As I struggled with heavy boxes at the bottom of the staircase, a voice suddenly echoed behind me. Linda, is that you? I turned around. He was so familiar to me, yet he felt strangely. Huh? What's up? You're Linda, right? Class 10-5? Pretty sure I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, I'm Linda. But how do you know me? You forget quickly, huh? We met in the drama club. You played Juliet, right? Ah, Johnson. You still remember that? I was genuinely surprised that Johnson remembered me from the high school play. Meeting the person I had once unrequited love for made everything around me feel awkward. After a few casual questions, Johnson helped me carry the heavy boxes to my room. Along the way, he didn't stop talking about college life, and I didn't hold back either. It was like there was this unspoken connection between us, like fate had its hand in it. Hard to believe, given how scared I used to be even to talk to him. And you know what? There were times when I pictured a future together, a home and kids with Johnson. It was like he was the perfect match I'd always dreamed of. Oh my goodness, it felt like destiny. After we got those boxes squared away, I didn't hesitate to seize the opportunity and invite Johnson to stick around for a meal. Luckily, he didn't turn me down and even suggested we cook together. It felt like I was living in a fairy tale. That night flowed like a dream. And in the days that followed, we'd frequently run into each other around my apartment complex, on campus, or at the bookstore I frequented. But the relationship between me and Johnson really took a big step about a month after that dinner. The light bulb in my bedroom suddenly blew out. I tried everything to fix it, but nothing worked. I even considered shelling out a good amount of money to hire an electrician and get a new bulb. Johnson? Hey, Linda. I just got back from my grandma's place and it looks like you're still up, so I brought you some apple pie she baked. Hope you don't mind. Of course not. Seems like you're having some trouble. Can I help anything? Well, actually, the light bulb in my room is acting up. I've tried fixing it a few times, but... If you don't mind, I can take a look and see if I can fix it for you. Oh my goodness, Johnson is such a kind man. I silently cheered his name in my heart, but on the outside, I tried to stay calm and a little bit reserved. I let him into my room, and he set to work on the bulbs. While Johnson was busy with them, I went out for a few minutes to grab some supplies. When I returned, the light in my bedroom was shining again. I couldn't help but express my joy to Johnson. Oh wow, you're really good at this. Without you, I probably would have had to spend a hefty sum. It's really not a big deal. If you ever need help with anything else, just give me a call. This statement from Johnson brought us closer. Because I took every opportunity to ask him for help, and of course, Johnson rarely said no. He started showing more intimate care towards me. And little by little, Johnson didn't hold back on letting me know he was into me. Things were definitely heating up between us. Johnson confessed his feelings for me during a Christmas date that year. But I played it cool and didn't give him a direct answer. Honestly, I had my reservation about the whole situation. There were some things during our time together that I didn't tell Johnson. It was after becoming close with him that I started getting texts from unknown numbers. Most of the messages were threatening, telling me to stay away from him. And then there were some messages that I thought were just made up stories and trash talk about Johnson. Keep your distance from Johnson. Stay away from him. The farther, the better. Otherwise, don't blame me for not warning you in advance. I saw these intermittent messages as spam and deleted them right after reading them. But over time, they kept coming more often and the stuff they were saying got crazier. I didn't waste any time blocking those numbers. It was getting way too much. However, those messages continued to linger in my head and I was truly affected by them. Not giving Johnson a response to his confession left me restless for many days. I threw myself into preparing for the school talent show to try and get rid of those nagging thoughts from my mind. But it seemed like everything couldn't return to normal. I was totally freaked out when I found a sneaky little camera behind the wall painting. Without thinking twice, I immediately called Johnson and told him what was happening. Johnson rushed to my house with a panic look on his face, showing genuine concern for my well-being. I'll help you handle this. Trust me, everything will be okay. You're safe, Linda. Johnson was there for me in the most distressing time. I was truly touched by his support. I agreed to John's confession, and we began dating like any other couple. 
About three months later, we decided to move in together. I was incredibly happy and comfortable in his home. But one day, I realized that things weren't as simple as I had imagined. I came across some pretty strange stuff at Johnson's place. And one of them was the exact same mini camera I found in my bedroom. It gave me the creeps, so I mustered up the courage to bring it up with him. Us tech guys tend to have a few things like that. Don't overthink it, okay? With that simple explanation, Johnson successfully dispelled my suspicions. I didn't want this small issue to strain our relationship. However, as time went on, Johnson's expectations for our relationship began to feel increasingly strange and stifling. Johnson was constantly checking in on me, wanting to know where I was, what I was doing, and who I was with. It was like he wanted to control every aspect of my life, which made a free spirit like me feel uncomfortable. I tried talking to him about privacy a bunch of times, but it didn't seem to make much of a difference. Linda, where are you right now? What's up, Johnson? Do you know what time it is now? Where are you? Are you at the bar, huh? I was a bit annoyed when Johnson kept calling me during our night out, despite me telling him I'd be coming back late. I'll be back soon, okay? Linda, you think your boyfriend's a bit too controlling? He's even stricter than your parents, I'd say. I have to admit, Johnson always goes a bit. Not long after the call ended, Johnson called again. This time, I was a bit tipsy, so I immediately hung up on him without hesitation. The phone kept ringing, the sound not drowned out by the music, but everyone sitting at the table didn't seem too pleased about it. I was irritated, so I grabbed my phone and left the bar. Before I could hit answer, Johnson appeared in front of me with a strangely calm demeanor. I'll take you home. It's not safe for a girl to be out on the streets this late. I was taken aback. How did he know the address of this bar? I never mentioned the name of it to him. Let's go. Without giving me a moment to think or paying any mind to my opinion, Johnson took my hand and walked away. Hey, stop! Johnson! You're violating my privacy! This is normal, caring behavior in a relationship. Don't get so dramatic. Johnson's attitude was so peculiar. He didn't bother to listen, just muttered things that sent shivers down my spine. Linda, you have to come home with me. You belong to me. Don't test my patience. At that moment, I thought maybe it was just a drunken hallucination. But it wasn't until some time <gasps> after that day that I learned a horrifying truth. I received another anonymous message, but this time it wasn't threats. The message simply contained the address of a coffee shop quite far from my home along with a sentence, Meet me, I'll tell you about Johnson. The message was sent a day before the scheduled meeting. My suspicions were at an all-time high and without hesitation, I agreed to meet the anonymous person. That night, I couldn't sleep. Right at 9 the next morning, I showed up at our meetup spot. And guess who's there? <gasps> Flora, my old high school nemesis who totally wrecked my first relationship. Flora had confessed her feelings to Johnson on his graduation day, and boom, they were a thing. I knew that. Flora and Johnson weren't in touch at the moment, but there was still some bad blood between current girlfriend and ex-girlfriend. <laughs> at first, I thought about making a run for it, but Flora held me back. Hold on, don't go! I'm not here to cause trouble. Then what do you want? You want Johnson back, huh? Linda, just calm down, we haven't come to that point yet. I bit down on my frustration and sat down across from Flora. I'm sure you remember the history between me and Johnson. So, what's your angle? Why we split? Why I had to get run out of this town? Run? Johnson is crazy! He obsessively watches and constantly tries to control me! Flora's <gasps> words sent a chill down my spine. Johnson was really controlling me. Mini cameras? Tracking devices? Those are his tools for keeping tabs on me. Every day, even every hour. You have to end things with Johnson immediately if you want to be free. Mini cameras? Johnson? He was the one who entered my room and set up that camera behind the painting. And he still acted like he had no clue, playing the role of a good guy to get close to me? In the midst of my shock, I was even more blown away and deflated because the person behind all my fear and distress was the one I loved. It felt like my whole world was crashing down as I looked at the proof Flora had gathered. It completely shattered my trust. No, this couldn't be. 
I bit my lip, trying to deny the truth. But the signs I'd noticed over time backed up what Flora was saying. Maybe Johnson had really attached a tracker to my phone. Otherwise, how did he figure out the bar to take me back when I hadn't mentioned the address beforehand? This was beyond terrifying. It's Johnson. Not even an hour after I left the house, he started calling and texting incessantly. I stared at my phone in horror, unmoving. I didn't want to answer. Flora got up with a stern look and walked away. You'd better get away from him. The sooner, the better. It was clear that Flora was terrified. She seemed haunted by Johnson's presence, too scared to ever face him again. When the call ended, I tried to regain my composure, grabbing my phone without hesitation and dialing the police. The panic in Flora's eyes told me that I couldn't face a crazed, controlling man like Johnson alone. Johnson wasn't the type to easily let things go. Calling the police was the best, the only option. While Flora had chosen to run, I wouldn't. I would face to face with Johnson, the one who had been watching me for the past while. And the award for best artist this year goes to... Giselle Garcia! The whole place is lit. People losing their minds. Someone nudges me and I snap back to reality, looking up. My manager's <laughs> voice is all proud and stuff. Giselle, don't just stand there. This award is all you. I'm legit stunned. Like, can't even process it. I shake off the days, hike up my dress, and step up to receive the trophy on the stage. It's like a freaking spotlight of glory. Hey there, I'm Giselle Garcia, 25 years old and a pop star. I hit the scene at just five, still a baby trying to talk. <laughs> See, my dad was directing this reality show, and naturally, he gave me a shot. Little did he know that I'd make his project have so much attention. My moves and expression in the opening number went viral overnight. My parents were flooded with offers for kitty fashion shoots. That's how my journey began, wobbling on stage in cute outfits, drowning in compliments. Oh my god, that cutie pie! Baby Giselle is totally an angel! What am I gonna do? I want a kid like Giselle! She's melting my heart! I popped up on loads of kids' mags and websites with different headlines. But it was all about praising my look and voice. That was a stepping stone to bigger things in my career. So, you think it's all just God-given luck? Nah, sadly not. If I knew what was coming, I'd steer clear of that twist of fate. If you want to know why, hit that like and subscribe button to catch my story. So, things started going off the rails once I became famous. Mom, I'm home. I miss you. Daddy, mommy. Mommy misses you too, <laughs> Giselle. Come here, you're almost late for your piano practice, sweetheart. After strutting on runways, I'd exhaustedly come home. But what was waiting for me wasn't hugs from my parents. It was mountains of exercise. Not only cultural lessons, but also a whole bunch of talent classes. Mom said I had to learn. Learn more to get even better and shine like a star. All the money and heart of my parents poured into me to get to where I am today. The day I stepped onto the stage and had the most prestigious award in hand. I put on a standard smile in front of dozens of lenses <laughs> and hundreds of thousands of audience in the hall and online. Taking the trophy, I hug Mrs. Mary, a musical genius of the decade, before I start my speech. First off, I want to express my gratitude tonight. It's a huge honor to stand on the stage with Mrs. Mary Hall, the person who's been a driving force throughout my career. I've met many incredible musicians, but never did I imagine I'd be the one named tonight. It's like a dream to me. And this award isn't just a testament to my own efforts, but also the dedication of my parents, the support of all of you, those who love and protect me tirelessly. Thank you for being the reason I'm up here. Thank you all. Here's to hoping we stay as awesome as this forever. My speech wraps up in a rapturous applause. I head down the stage, greeted by the open arms of my parents, who've been waiting for me throughout the award ceremony. <laughs> The reporters and journalists started swarming around my family, bombarding us with questions. 
Sir, can you share your thoughts on your daughter, Giselle Garcia, winning the Best Artist Award this year? Mrs. Garcia, could you tell us how you're feeling right now? Giselle, do you think you deserve the award this year? I didn't even get a chance to respond to the reporter's questions, as my manager quickly pulled me towards the car. There was still so much on my plate, and staying here any longer wasn't an option. As I sat in the car, I wanted to take a moment to rest. But it turns out that was a fleeting thought quickly squashed by Joyce. She shook me awake and handed me a stack of papers. No time for napping. We have an interview with Belly Magazine. Here are some pre-prepared questions. Take a look and decide how you want to answer them. Are you kidding, Joyce? I just left an event that lasted over three hours. Yes, don't forget. You just received an award. Starting tonight, our schedule is packed. Giselle, you need to get used to this. Hold up, I need some downtime too, you know. Didn't we discuss this earlier? I'm supposed to have a month off next. Stop dreaming, Giselle. The company will soon give you a new schedule. We don't have time for breaks. You need to be more visible to the public. I tried my best to contain my frustration in the face of Joyce's relentless push. Every time, she came off as this strict, dedicated manager, but in reality, she and that soulless company only saw things in terms of profit and gain. And me? I was just a golden laying goose, nothing more. I didn't get to make decisions. Ever since I officially debuted at 18, Joyce became my manager. After my parents, she was the one who kept the tightest watch over me. She meddled in my life excessively. From where I went, what I did, to even my clothes and meals. Before I turned 18, I wasn't allowed to dye my hair. After I hit 18, I had to dye it according to her preferences. It was beyond frustrating. <sighs> In the life of a female star, you always pay attention to every detail. I had got to stay in shape and always be a perfect figure to present to the audience. I couldn't eat what I wanted or do what I liked. Maybe I only found freedom when I got home. And this time, like all those other times, Joyce brought me back after finishing the interview with Belly Magazine. It was already past 1 in the morning. I'll pick you up at 7 a.m. tomorrow. You only have two hours to get ready. Joyce said this, then left, leaving me standing in front of the apartment building. I wanted to scream to release the frustration building up inside. But in the end, I had to remain silent for the sake of my image. A sound jolted me. It was oddly familiar, but I didn't pay much attention. I headed straight for the main lobby of the building. Right now, what I need was my comfy bed. But it seemed like God wouldn't hear my praying. Just as I entered the door, I nearly collided with a night security guard. Oh, I'm so sorry, miss. It's okay. Are you Giselle Garcia? I've seen you on TV. My daughter is a huge fan of yours. Please send my thanks to your daughter. The conversation was brief, but the guard's gaze didn't seem <laughs> friendly. It sent shivers down my spine. I didn't come here often, but I distinctly remember never encountering a security guard who looked like him. I felt a sense of unease, so I hurriedly stepped into the elevator, not wanting to linger too long with him. The security in the building I lived in was always top-notch. I never thought I'd encounter anything strange. However, a gut feeling urged me to move quickly and not to look back. The elevator stopped on the sixth floor. I stepped out and quickly entered the passcode to open the door to my room. The room seemed to have undergone some changes. I didn't feel as naturally comfortable as I usually did. Instead, my heart was filled with an ease. It felt like someone was staring at me intently. I switched on the lights in the house. No sign of any kind of disturbance. Everything seemed normal just as I left it. However, it didn't calm me down. I decided to pick up my phone and call my boyfriend Harding, hoping he'd come and be with me right now. After a few seconds, he finally picked up. Good evening, Bay. Have you received the bouquet I sent you? Harding, I think I'm being followed. What? I'm being followed. The paparazzi. Come on, Giselle, you're used to this, aren't you? People like us are always in the sights of them. Harding spoke as if being followed wasn't a big deal. The combination of fear and his attitude left me in a confused state. Harding, I'm being serious. I really think I'm being followed. It's like someone is constantly watching me. All right, Giselle, you just got home, right? 
I'll come to you. Don't worry too much. I didn't respond to Harding. I immediately hung up. While waiting for him, I couldn't sit still. I paced around the house, only calming down when I saw him through my cat's eyes. I opened the door and hugged him tightly. Harding! Oh my, look at you! Partly of fear, partly of missing him, I hugged Harding tightly. It had been over three months since we'd seen each other in person, only talking on the phone. Giselle, I've missed you! Me too. After our time apart, we <laughs> embraced each other, kissing passionately. <laughs> I was so caught up in his warmth that I forgot about the crucial issue, that I was being watched. I slipped into a dream within Harding's warm embrace, little suspecting that the next day would turn into a nightmare. The ringing on the phone abruptly woke me up. I answered, and Joyce's voice came through full of anger. Giselle, what on earth are you doing? What's going on? You've just ruined your own career. See that? Paparazzi have publicly revealed your relationship with that actor. You need to explain to the company, and there's a whole bunch of reporters waiting outside. <gasps> Joyce, what's happening? We've never been out on a date. Have you forgotten that paparazzi can stalk you anywhere, even in your own home? Everything within me seemed to crumble. Harding was still asleep. I frantically opened social media, and everywhere were images of Harding's car parked in the building's parking lot where I lived. There were even images of him standing outside my door of us hugging. They were all blurry, but they all proved that Harding and I were dating. None of this would have happened if he and I were 10 years apart. And Harding, he's been around the block, divorced with a kid, while I'm still seen by the public as this innocent, wholesome gal. I have no clue when Harding snapped out of it, but he's been bombarded with calls from managers in the company. <gasps> We gotta clear this up. Between me and Giselle, it's an appropriate relationship. This ain't just about Harding. You get it? They people never gonna buy into you two. I can see the frustration in Harding's face. I'm right there with him, wondering why the heck our love is off limits. Isn't that my own freedom? And just when we thought one mess was enough, my parents swooped in right after the whole dating news went viral. They stormed into my place. Not exactly thrilled, more like seriously ticked off. Giselle, what's this all about? You better be honest with me and your mom. Yeah, they're still in the dark about us. I'm standing there, awkward as heck. Harding was speaking for me. Giselle and I are just getting to know each other, for real. Are you catching what you're saying? We're serious about this, I hope. No way! Our family is never gonna accept this between you and our daughter. Giselle's too young. You can't be messing with her. Mom! I'm up to snuff. She's just trying to control me like the manager. <laughs> You're not allowed to speak, young lady. But I'm 25. I know what I'm doing. Can you stop treating me like a little girl already? You think you know what you're doing? Giselle, if you knew, none of this would have happened today. Look how many fans you've got now. Only us, your parents, truly care about you. I disapproved of this relationship. End it right now and give a reasonable explanation to the public. Harding couldn't get another word in, and neither could I. Everything that's happened has thrown us for a loop. In that moment, I just dropped the whole thing. Giselle! Giselle! Open up! It's me! What's the matter now? We all don't want to hear any more bad things. You got to see this for yourself. Joyce had a stack of photos showing me everywhere, anytime, and even some sneaky shots of me in my PJs taken through a hotel window. So basically, every move of mine has been tracked by someone. My privacy's been invaded big time. My parents, when they saw those photos, let out a horrified gasp. I couldn't hold back. I broke down in tears. I've had enough. Harding hugged me. Giselle, come on, take it easy. We'll figure this out. His words didn't seem to help much. I cried even harder. <laughs> this isn't the first time I've been followed. And my parents know paparazzi exist, but they see it as a necessary evil for every artist to deal with. And today, neither my mom or dad expected things to escalate like this. Anonymous accounts on social media even spread a clip of me in a fitting room at some hotel. Everyone realized how serious this was. My dad picked up the phone and called the cops and a lawyer. It didn't take long for the cops to trace the identities of those who leaked it. 
turns out most of them were just money-hungry photographers. Some of them started out as fans who turned into paparazzi. Facing them, I was genuinely scared. This isn't how you show love. No, that's real love. Giselle, I care deeply about you. Why can't you get that? I just want to get closer to you, Giselle. Every word <gasps> that guy spelled gave me the heebie-jeebies. I quickly left the police station without a second thought. This needs to end soon. I don't want to live a life as a star any longer. But is a private life without all the glitz and glam worth giving up the career my parents and I have worked so hard for? I'm standing at a crossroads, torn between staying in the limelight and a comfy regular life where I can freely love and do what I want. My parents said they'd back whatever decision I made. After all, they've been in the grind for years and don't want me in that mess any longer. Even so, I couldn't make up my mind. It's not just for my parents, but for me too. I'm not brave enough to turn my back on the fans, the ones who've been following Giselle Garcia since she was a kid. This decision was a tough nut to crack. Finally, a week before the press conference, we sat down and had a talk. I'm gonna take a break from the entertainment scene after a crazy long stretch. I'm ready to turn the page where the glitz and glamour might not reach. As for Harding, we're still in love, <laughs> even though my parents were dead set against it. The two of us held a press conference facing the public and the reporters, ready to field all their questions. Why do you choose to take a break in the prime time like this? Is it because of your relationship with Harding Black? Are you concerned about your reputation in the future? Well, sir, deciding to take a break was a long, hard consideration. As I mentioned earlier, my relationship with Harding will carry on. I need some time to rest after what's gone down in the past few days. Reputation isn't my top priority. Could you please tell us why you and Giselle are dating? Does the age difference bother you? We're dating because it's simple. We found harmony in each other. Age difference, gender issues, status, none of it is a roadblock for love between two people. Did I get them right? There were a million other mind-boggling questions from the media. I answered them all. But now, that's all gone. I just didn't have the energy to care about fan reactions anymore. After the press conference, I went on a trip with Harding. It was amazing. <laughs> I've been looking forward to the day when we could roam around freely without hiding. Freedom's got its own allure for sure. Hooray!